Welcome back everyone, we're back in the yard and you know what that means? We're doing a performance mod on the EP3. <laughs> Alright guys, what I wanted to do quickly before the video starts is I wanted to run through what stuff you're actually going to need when installing an RBC manifold because as you're going to see later on in the video there was some stuff that I was missing and I had to wait until doing this so I'm quickly going to run through exactly what you're going to need so you don't run into the same problems that I do so what you're going to need is a K20 gasket for the manifold so that's a gasket between here and here and you can use the original one that is on it it's perfectly fine or you can get an exact same one as it but when you're uh, messing around with gaskets and taking stuff off it's always good to replace them the next thing you're going to need is the RBC manifold now the RBC manifold as far as I'm aware comes from an RSX but you cannot bolt the RSX straight on there are modifications that need to be done I bought mine from Teguwa who do all of the modifications that I needed for it so it's much easier when you come to that. What else you're going to need is this pipe here. So on the original manifold that pipe is around here somewhere and the pipe that's on it originally won't fit so you're going to need this uh, pipe here. So if you're staying with the stock throttle body and any other throttle body for that matter I think for the K20 you are going to need this bracket here. So like I said, this manifold is off uh, an RSX, I think, but it's whatever it is, it's not off a, a K20 engine. So you're going to need this adapter. And what this does is allow you to bolt the throttle body onto the intake manifold. And in order to do that, you are going to need a gasket for both sides. Again, you can reuse the gasket that was on this, but it's always, it's always good to replace that sort of stuff. So you're going to need a gasket for this side, which is that and you're going to need a PCB gasket for the other side which is the manifold that was originally on there for reference that is this one right here as you can see it's PRB not PBC but yeah it's PRB gasket and the other one you're going to need is an RBC which is the one down there finally the last thing you need and this was something that I could not find anywhere it was in loads of pictures but no one explained what it was so on the RBC manifold there is this hole. All the other ones don't go into the intake manifold, it's just this one. So as you, I don't know if you can see, but that hole goes straight through in the throttle body, get into the intake manifold. Now you can't have that on your intake because if stuff drops in there, it's gonna fall straight into the engine. So on a lot of pictures, they put in like this rubber thing, but no one explained what it was. So what you use to plug it up is this thing right here. So it just fits on like that and screws in and that will say blocks it all up so i'm pretty sure that's everything that you need if you're planning on doing this again please make sure that you've got all the parts and you don't run into the same problems that i did because it took me absolutely ages i started this on saturday it's now wednesday and i've had to wait for all the parts it's been so long but it's going to be well worth it so enjoy the video and i hope you have fun so the first thing we need to do is take off this here as you probably know, this is where the intake manifold already is, and that's where we're going to put in the new one. So yeah, take this off, and then we can start taking the intake, the air filter and all of that off. So now that we've got that shield off, what we need to do now is take the fuel rail off. What you'll need to do is take each of the four injectors off, and then you'll need to take these bolts off here, and then hopefully it should all pull out. So I've taken the fuel rail off and I've just covered the injectors with some tissue paper so no dirt, no dirt gets into them. So now the next thing we need to do is just take some of these pipes off so we can free up some room. And then we have to take the air intake off and the throttle body.
So, what have I done? Taken out the fuel rail, there was a line coming from here to here, which I took off. I took off all of my intake, and now I just need to take off this throttle body, which I believe is bolts here, one there, and I think there's probably two on the bottom side of it, but I can't really see them, so I'll have to have a look. Once that out, it's all free, and we can start taking off the intake manifold. So I think I've got the throttle body off now. There was two bolts diagonally, and then there's two nuts diagonally. And that's what it looked like. So you had two bolts there and two nuts on the side. And I think I can just pull it off. There we go. It's a throttle body free. So I put the fuel rail back in just because I don't want anything going into the, any dirt going into the actual engine. So now that it's all free, I can take it out. You have two bolts there and there. And then you've got another, or oh, it's there and there. You've got another one there, another one over there. And then you've got three on the bottom there, there, there. So I'm probably gonna jack the car up as it will probably be easier to reach it from there. But yeah, this is the painful part. So I'm under the car here now. And the only bolt that you can actually access from here is that one up here so it's just a stand to hold up the intake so i sprayed it with wd-40 take that off and then we can tackle the rest from the top for reference this is where your sump is or sump plug is back there pull it back and it's right there and i believe it's a 12 mil so let's try and get that off We're off! It's not got to fit, so there's no point to keep trying it. No, but I'm just seeing, trying to judge which way you need to, Yeah, so it's just that bit. So we managed to get it fit. What you had to do is cut off along here and then cut two or a hole down there and a hole down there for it to all fit. But it's currently, oh my god, I'm so bad. But it's currently like half three. We've only done about half of it and it's so hot outside, we haven't had anything. So I'm going to quickly go home, get some food, come back and then finish it off then, hopefully, hopefully. So we finally got the manifold in and now we're just bolting it all up. And it's not rubbing on anything, is it? Come on, I want to stop the cow. <laughs> so what has happened? So we got the old man uh, manifold off, put the new one in, fuel line in, or fuel rail in, everything's fine until we got to the adapter. So what's meant to happen here is there is, obviously this is the intake manifold and then there's a plate to match up to the throttle body and the, because they don't match because they're from two different cars. So we had the gasket for this side, but I bought the wrong gasket for this side. So therefore we have to leave it for there for today. Another problem that we have is my uh, intake probably won't fit once this is on here because this comes at a slight angle So yeah, I will have to buy a gasket and probably fit it on like Tuesday or something like that and Yeah, it's annoying, but these things happen Little low has to be stranded, but we'll save her yet So yeah, as you can probably tell now there has been a bit of a jump I've now picked up from the start of the video and it's time to put everything uh, into place. So what we're doing now is we're getting the RBC adapter for the throttle body and the way that this works is all the bolts everything on this side is or well say the one with the fewest bolts is going towards the manifold like that and the throttle body goes on this side. So you'll need to put a gasket on like that and then stick it on. 
So when putting the adapter plate on, it comes with three different bolts. As I've just found out, you put the shorter ones into the manifold, into the intake manifold, and I'm pretty sure it's the medium sized ones that you put on the other side, but I'll double check once I actually get to that bit. So I've got the bolts in, but I haven't tightened them down yet. You want to go in opposite directions to make sure the gasket is on there securely and all in the same pressure. Also, don't tie them too tight because they're Allen keys. So you don't want to round them and then never get them off again. So I'm going to tighten them now quickly. So I've tightened them all up now and this is actually on correct. Even though if you look from the side, it doesn't look like it is. But trust me, it is. And now you're just left with these bolts on these side, I'm pretty sure these are the long ones. So what you do is get the gasket, put it on between these two, and then you just pull it up and they should slide in the bolts that they once came in from. Right, so I've literally been at this for about an hour and I haven't even got any further. I haven't got the throttle body onto, I've got the adapter on, but I haven't got the throttle body onto the adapter. It's at some weird angle. So say if that's, we'll say the four bolts are here, so those are the two bolts at the top. It has to go like that to fit onto the to fit onto the adapter and there's stuff just in the way. I was pulling out coolant pipes a lot, making longer cooler pipes. Nothing was working. Uh, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Right, so as I'm here, I might as well uh, show you how to put on this plug stopper. So you just put that the big side over there and there's a rubber washer on it so it should just pop into place like that and then it also comes with this hex bolt here so you just stick that in and do it up to show you what I'm exactly stuck on as you can see there those are the bolts that are going into the manifold and those are the two that are meant to be going through this throttle body here and here and two on the bottom but yeah as you can see they're at a slight angle and it doesn't actually go in that angle so initially I had taken this one off here this coolant pipe and replaced it with a longer one yeah so then there was something else now I thought it was this coolant pipe under here again so I took that out a little bit still the problem and it turns out that the actual issue is on the bottom there in the bottom right hand corner left hand corner right there is some leads coming out of the throttle body and as you can see i'm not sure but so as you can see just there on the left where you can see the back of this wire was hitting up against the thing that the bonnet latch is tied into and it's just that bit too long where you can't put the this or line the throttle body up properly so yeah I don't know what I'm gonna do I think I have to leave it there for today again because I'm gonna need another pair of hands to kind of try and twist it as much as possible all right boys and girls I finally it's the next day I finally got the throttle body on finally got it on so this is what it looks like all together as you can see that's the bracket this is the throttle body down there so the thing that keeps the catch the lock on this is the thing that stops it there's a, a bracket that goes all the way down and I just uh, file down a little bit of it giving it just enough room for the bottom wire that comes out the back side of it to you know slide in so now I'm going to try the put the intake in but again that's going to be another problem in itself or rather I did turn it on just see everything was working it started fine but it was bouncing from 3,000 revs to 2,000 revs as it just started now I don't know that's only because I don't have an intake on and none of the wires are, or there's one wire that's not plugged in or there's something wrong with the injectors but I'm going to try and put it all back together, start it and see what happens. Right boys and girls, so I just, I haven't fully put the intake back because it doesn't fit. So I've got a new intake, it just came today, the second hand, so I'll do an install of that. But basically the reason why it was idling weirdly was because I'm pretty sure there was a couple of hoses that I had left off so I'd left this one off 
and I had obviously these ones but they don't actually really do anything they're just kind of vacuum lines you can actually end up deleting these and I also didn't have this cable in so I started it and it idles fine the we'll say the pedal was a bit stiff to start with but uh, once I pushed my foot down to the floor it was fine uh, it kind of loosened up a little bit but yeah everything seems good now it's taken me absolutely ages to put this in but it's all working now hiya but it's all working now so I'm going to end it there you just have to put your intake on and it works properly but I'm going to change mine so I'm not going to bother but anyway thank you for watching I hope you found it interesting and I hope it helps you if you end up doing this mod it is worth it if it goes well and once it's installed but yeah it was a difficult one to do so hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time